the Lord has done it again. Emmanuel has done it again. Yeah, so on this note, let's thank God for deliverance. <laughs> Let's go to verse 9. Verse 9. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what's happening? I want us to thank God for deliverance. For deliverance. Okay, I think we should start from Okay, you let's start from seven so that we can relate to what's going on. It says that therefore receive one another. Hallelujah. Um one of the things I remember telling you yesterday was that we are all in the same school, but we are not in the same class. We are all not having the same spiritual maturity. Hallelujah. <coughs> so Paul is trying to say that there are people who are now growing spiritually. Let's learn to receive them. Amen. Amen. <coughs> it's like when you go to a school, there are people in um, nursery, some are in class one, some are in class five. So, but the, the fact that you're in JHS three doesn't mean you should bully those in primary one. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul is saying that even though we are all in the same church, but our level of maturity is not the same. There are people who are still struggling with pornography. You, by God's grace, you have been able to overcome it. Okay. Don't look look at them with um, uh, contempt. Don't disrespect them. Don't make them feel they are nothing. Don't make them feel they are carnal. They are, they are not serious in life. Don't belittle them because what don't despise them because they are not at your level hallelujah Amen. so paul is saying that even if we don't have the same level of spirituality we can still have harmony unity harmony hallelujah Amen. it's like um, when they are playing keyboard you see that the the white ones the white the keyboard has um, two colors or oh, isn't it black and white the small ones are black and then the long ones are white uh, so the white ones is longer are longer than the black ones but they're able to when you uh, <coughs> combine them and you play them together <coughs> it produces a very nice melody and harmony hallelujah so let's not um, have issues with ourselves, despise each other because we feel more spiritual than the other. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the one beside you, avoid superiority complex. Avoid superiority complex. Hallelujah. Amen. Now he says, therefore receive one another. The word receive there is accept. 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 Accept people's opinions, people's views. Don't think someone is not your class. Don't think someone does not have anything proper to say. <coughs> yes, you can be more spiritual than your partner, but there can be harmony if you know what is called receive one another. Hallelujah. Then Paul continues to give us why we should receive one another. Why should you not look down on somebody you are more spiritual than? Hallelujah. Do you like the conversation? Yes. 
because I want to achieve love in the church. I want the Holy Ghost to use his words to achieve love in the church. And one of the things that can affect the love in the church is spiritual pride. Yes, when we feel that we have so much spiritual achievement than others, so we start to belittle them. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So he said, therefore, receive one another. Then he goes on to tell us why we should learn to receive one another. Number one, he says, just as Christ also received us. So the first reason he gave was that, Charlie, somebody has accepted you. So it's enough reason to also accept someone. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you check your life, realize that you also, you are, you are not the best in relation to somebody. I mean, somebody is better than you, but he has accepted you. So Paul is saying that Christ has received you. He didn't reject you. You and Christ, who is more spiritual? You don't have to ask, isn't it? <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, but he still accepted you. He didn't reject you. When you even came to Christ, you used to um, have issues. You used to have past. Okay, you used to sleep with older women. <laughs> yeah. But when you came to Christ, he didn't reject you. He said, because you were not rejected, you too don't reject someone. Hallelujah. Then he gives the last reason why we should receive one another. He says, to the glory of, of God. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. It means that anytime you live harmoniously with people, you bring glory to God. There's a lot of glory in unity. There is a lot of beauty in unity. Amen. Amen. Say, I refuse to be proud. Say it again. Say, I refuse to be proud. Say, I have a humble heart. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, keep me humble. No matter my success in life. No matter my spiritual achievement. Say, Holy Spirit, keep me humble. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, give me grace not to belittle others. Not to look down others. Say, I have the spirit of Christ. I remain obedient to God and his authority in the name of Jesus. Verse 8. He said, now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision. The circumcision there is stand for Jews. He has become a servant to the Jews. Can you imagine? You know Jesus? He's God. But he didn't raise himself above the Jews. He became a servant to the Jews. But he was more spiritual than the Jews. I don't know if you get my point. Like sometimes you are more spiritual than somebody, but you are sent as a leader to be a servant to the person. You are supposed to serve the person. You are not supposed to exercise your um, 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 lordship <laughs> over the person. Listen, if you start raising yourself, you cannot um, be humble. Yeah. So you should not be somebody who doesn't know how to lower yourself. You are Jesus. But lower yourself and serve the Jews for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the Father. Verse 9. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, for his mercy, for his mercy. Amen. So he says that we should thank God for his what? Mercy. Imagine every wrong thing you did, you were punished for it every wrong thing you did look at the, the 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 men you have deceived the girls you have lied to mercy say thank god for mercy thank god for mercy no mercy means that you are not treated according to the wrongs you have done and imagine every wrong you did you were punished for it what will your life be so David said, sorry, Paul quoted David actually. 
he quoted David and he says that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. For this reason, I will confess. For this reason, for what reason? He said, I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. So if you don't like singing, it's a sign you are not grateful for mercy. People are grateful for mercy. They like to sing. And they sing from their heart. Now, take me back to I want to, to sh- I want to show you this scripture in the Old Testament. Okay. So Psalm 18, verse 49. <coughs> Psalm 18, verse 49. It says, Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. Verse 50. Great deliverance. So this is where my prayer is coming from. We are thanking God for great deliverance. This is a very great deliverance. (laughs) 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 David, thank God for great deliverance. And we want to join David today. (laughs) <laughs> don't, don't, you know David <laughs> you want to join David today <laughs> we want to join David today who led Peter and Isaac <laughs> you know if you study the life of David you realize that God delivered him from so many things. Mm-hmm. Number one was Goliath. Goliath. Goliath could have easily finished him. Mm-hmm. Some schools are like Goliath. Delivered them, uh, David from Goliath. Wow. <laughs> I don't know who. Sometimes God can deliver you from unreasonable people. They are like Goliath. <laughs> Maybe unreasonable boss, unreasonable beloved, unreasonable lecturers. Unreasonable precedents. We want to thank God. We want to join with David. <laughs> People are more ready to thank God. Now. <laughs> Another thing is that God delivered David from a lion. And God also delivered David from a bear. Then lastly, God delivered David from Saul. Saul was chasing the life of David, but Saul never got David. You know, one of the scenes that touched my heart is, you know the reason why Saul couldn't get David? It was because David never sinned. He had never done anything bad. He was never guilty. So God was really with him. Now, the point where he could have been guilty was if he had killed Nabal. If he had killed Nabal, Saul could have easily killed him. But look at how God ensure that David will not kill Nabal so that David will still be blameless and Saul will not get him. Yeah, your blamelessness is your protection. Yeah, so God kept David blameless so that Saul cannot have anything against him. So God delivered David from Saul. Hallelujah. And then the last thing I want to say is that David was never wounded in a battle but he fought many wars. David never lost any member of his body, but he fought many wars. He never lost any battle. You will never lose any battle in Jesus' name. Yeah. Some of you, some of you, you are so blessed that there is no business you have done that you have failed. It's God that has delivered you from losses. Some of you too, you have written exams in in Legon, UPSA. You have never had receipt. Or we don't have some here. We do, isn't it? Yes. A lot. 
and you never failed. God is the one who delivered you and ensured that you never lose any battle. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't have a job, maybe you don't have money, but God has delivered you from many situations. God has delivered you from car accident. God has delivered you from fire outbreaks. Let's not focus on what God has not done. And let's focus on what God has done for us. I want us to lift up our voice and say, Father, thank you for great deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Ya 
delivering me from near death experiences in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, thank you for delivering me from a wrong marriage in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, thank you. Father, thank you for delivering me from a wrong job in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Say, Father, thank you for delivering me for delivering me for delivering me from addictions in the name of Jesus from sin Father thank you from delivering me from addictions from sins in the name of Jesus of Jesus of Jesus have you been delivered from some addictions oh yes oh yes there were some bad things you couldn't help yourself but to do it. But you don't even remember how you stopped. He took you out of it. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. You, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now take me back to the Romans and we start our first prayer. Matola Bahayas. Where we were reading, oh, you don't remember? It was verse 11. Verse 9. Okay, verse 10. Again, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Verse 10. There's some, look, look at it. There are some people who are happy. Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. There are some people who are happy when they are with unbelievers. But they are not happy when they are with the people of God. But Paul said we should learn to rejoice with his people. Be happy when you are around the saints. It's a revelation of what is inside you. Verse 11. And again, praise the Lord, O Gentiles, loud him. Loud means clap for him. Hallelujah. Can we clap for Jesus? <laughs> now, one of the reasons why it's very important to go to church is that when you go to church, you'll get the opportunity to clap for Jesus. How many of you realize that on your own you have barely clapped for Jesus? But when you come to church, you say, let's clap for Jesus. But Paul said that it's part of one of the ways to show you are grateful to God is to clap for him. Hallelujah. So he said, loud him, O ye peoples. Verse 12. And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse and he who rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him, the Gentiles shall what? Hope. In Jesus Christ, the Gentiles shall what? Hope. Now, what does it mean when we say Jesus is our hope? Hallelujah. That is what it means. When we say that somebody is your hope, okay, it means that he's the only one who can make your wishes and your desires happen. Let me explain it further. For instance, 
Maybe somebody is in trouble. He needs 5,000 CDs. Else he will be arrested. Then he comes to you and says, Senior, please, you are my only hope. What does it mean? It means that without you, I'll be arrested. I have a desire to get $5,000. But it is only Jesus that can make it happen. You understand what I'm saying? Do you have some dreams that only God can make it happen? Yes. It means that he's your hope. You see, there are some dreams I have. Eh? No man can make it happen except Jesus. Do you have such dreams? Yes. Do you have such dreams? Yes. I want to preach in 90 countries. 100 countries. Before Jesus comes. Which man can make this happen? It's Jesus. So do you know our prayer? You are praying, our Father, let my dream come to pass. I don't know the dream you have. Maybe you have a dream to own a house before 30. No human being can make it come to pass. Maybe you have a dream to marry next year. Some of you have a dream to buy a car. One day you say, ah, this is a dream come true. Maybe you have a dream to become a lawyer. You have a dream to become a chartered accountant. You have a dream to give $10,000 as a seed. You have a dream to build 3,000 churches. You are saying that, Father, make my dream come to pass. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. He's our only hope. He's the only one who can make this dream happen. I don't know what dream you have, but you want to lift up your voice in prayer and say, Father, make my dream come to pass. I have a dream to be a chartered accountant. I have a dream to be a lawyer. I have a dream to be a medical doctor. I have a dream to be a pastor. I have a dream to be a successful banker. Lift up your voice. I have a dream to get a job that gives me 20,000 CDs every month. You want to lift up your voice and say, Oh God, make my dream come to pass. I cannot achieve my dream without you. I look at I. I involve you in my dreams. Lift up your voice. Come on, talk to God about your dreams. He's your only hope. He's the only person who can make it happen. Lift up your voice and commit your dreams into the hands of God. I have a dream to build a parcel. I have a dream to build an ecclesia. I have a dream to pass 50 people. It is only God that can make it come to pass. Lift up your voice and pray that Father, make my dream come to pass. Father, make my dream come to pass. I have a dream to give $10,000 as a seed. I have a dream to give $100,000 as a seed. Father, make it come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Come on, don't get tired of praying.
The dream of this spring, let it come to pass in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Charlie, whatever dream you have, let it come to pass. Sometimes people's dreams don't come to pass because they didn't involve God. They thought they could do it by themselves. Yes, I don't know what dream you have. You want to be a chartered accountant, you want to be a lawyer, a pastor, a bank manager. Father, let it come to pass in Jesus' name. Why? Because in him the Gentile shall hope. He's the only person that can make what is in our heart happen. Our mothers cannot, our fathers cannot. Hallelujah. Verse 22, we are praying our next prayer. Hallelujah. Paul said, for this reason, I also have been much hindered. Say hindered. Hindered. The word hindered means to oppose something. To oppose. Opposition. Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying against things that opposes us. Sometimes you want to do something, but something is stopping you. Maybe you want to go and preach, but something is stopping you. Maybe you want to go and start a branch, but something is stopping you. Maybe you want to uh, marry, but something is stopping you. Maybe you want to buy something, but something is stopping you. You want to pray and declare and pray against. You see, without dealing with opposition, life will not be a blessing. It will be a burden. Because anytime you make an attempt to move forward, then you are not able to go because something opposes you. We are praying against anything that opposes good things in your life. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again. Say in the name of Jesus. Maybe you want to get married, but something is opposing you. Sometimes it can even be human beings, uh, in laws, prospective in laws. That the devil has decided to use them to oppose you. Maybe you want to find a job, but something is opposing you. We are declaring against anything that is preventing you from moving forward. Say, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus say, any agent, any agent of darkness, of darkness assigned, assigned to oppose, to oppose good, things good things in my life. life. There are people, they can never have a successful relationship. When they stay in a relationship that after two years, it goes. After three, then they start another one after. If you have stayed in some number of relationships, I don't want to use any figure, but maybe if you have stayed in a relationship, let's say five times, all of them broke up. Mostly something that is opposing you. Like anything you have done it several times, but you are still not seeing results. You are still not able to break through. Sometimes it's a force that is opposing you. But we are praying against them. Say any agent. Any agent. Listen, the devil doesn't know. Um, how should I put it? Anybody, the moment you are born, a devil or a demon is assigned to you to ensure that you don't progress in life. The day you were born as a child, that's when it, an arch enemy was assigned to you. 
So you cannot joke with the spirit world. Say any agent, any agent of, darkness of darkness assigned, assigned to, oppose to oppose good things, good things in, my in my life. Say, I scatter you, I scatter you by, the by the power of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say every tongue every of opposition rest against, against me in my workplace, in my ministry. In my ministry. In my marriage, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Say it again. Say every tongue of opposition raised against me in my workplace, in my ministry. Be silenced in the name of Jesus. Say I receive supernatural empowerment that makes me unopposable from today. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Say anything I am doing consciously or unconsciously that is giving my opposition an edge over my life. Say anything I am doing consciously or unconsciously that is giving my opposition an edge over my life. Say I ended by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, any error I have committed that my opposers are using against me, say, Father, destroy their evidence and show me mercy. And show me mercy. Say, any error I have committed that my opposers are using against me, say, Father, destroy their evidence. And show me mercy in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Come on, declare against opposition. If power was hindered, Satan Nadaba, let's pray against opposition. Mapamba, evidence in their hands that causes them to oppose us. In the name of Jesus, let the Father destroy their evidence by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Say by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
let every stumbling block preventing my progress be removed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we are praying for fresh opportunities. New opportunities. New opportunities. Hallelujah. He said, for this reason, I have also been much hindered. Paul was hindered. He was opposed when he wanted to go and preach. Yes. How much more us you can be opposed? The only thing that can prevent you from being opposed is when you pray about it. So deal with opposition on the arena of prayer. Verse 23. Then he says, but now, no longer having a place in these parts, having a great desire these many years to come to you. Do you know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying, I've been looking for opportunities to come to you. I have had a great desire. Having a great desire these many years to come, to come to you. I have a great desire, but there is no opportunity. How many of you have desire to be rich? You want to make ten thousand dollars very soon, but do you realize that sometimes, Charlie, money is hidden in opportunities, and your desire alone is not enough. You need some opportunities to come your way. You need some opportunity. You see, I can tell you that there is a reason why people are successful more than others. Why are people's marriages working? And others are not working. Why are people's finances working and others are not working? There are many reasons, but one of them is opportunities. I always say that I believe that maybe the best player in the in Ghana, okay, the best football player in Ghana may not be Mohammed Kudus. He has the opportunity. There's somebody who knows how like Frempon ahead knows how to play football. <laughs> but he didn't get the opportunity. Sometimes it's a different thing to have the skills. You can have the skills, you can have the desire, and still not have the opportunity. You have potentials, but there are no opportunities to show your potentials. Listen, you need about five sources of income. You need about three sources of income. But you see, God must create those opportunities for you. You are praying for fresh opportunities. Fresh opportunities. Fresh opportunities to preach the gospel. Fresh, fresh opportunities to increase your source of income. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray for fresh opportunities. Mama, Gozele, me Gozele, Ikaya, Ma Papaya, Ipapaya, Ipapaya. Ipa ba 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 Ipa ba 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 ba Ya pamba baba ba ya pamba ba ya pamba ba ba ya pamba ba ba ya pamba ba come on pray for new doors of opportunities opportunity to make more money opportunity to preach the gospel opportunity to start another business opportunity to grow your business opportunity for new sources of money Zapa la ba la ba la ba 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 
In the name of Jesus. Charlie, may new doors be open for you. May new things come into your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. New opportunities to preach the gospel. New opportunities to multiply your sources of income. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 20. I want us to shift and pray for the church members especially. Hallelujah. Hmm. Glory to Jesus. He says, and so I have made it my aim. Hmm. The word aim here is vision. So I've made it my vision. To preach the gospel. Can you imagine Paul's vision? What a spiritual vision. He said, I have made it my vision to preach the gospel. Then he mentioned, he said, that the first vision I have is that I want to preach the gospel. It's not a car, it's not a house, it's not a land. My first vision is I want to preach the gospel. Then he gives us the second vision. He says, not where Christ was named. He said, I want to plant a new church. I don't want to go to a place where a church is there already. I want to go to a place where Christ's name is not heard at all. Lest I should build on another man's foundation. He said, oh, I don't want a place that Christ has even gotten there. I'll be building on someone's foundation. I want to be a pioneer. Can you imagine? I want to be a founder. Paul said, I want to start a church. Verse 21. But as it is written, Paul said that there is something that is written in the Bible. I want to fulfill scriptures. He said, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. The people that they have never heard of Jesus, they will see Jesus. He said, to him, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. He said, this scripture he read in the Old Testament, he wants to fulfill it. So he wants to preach at a place that Christ has not been named. He says, and those who have not heard shall understand. You are saying that, Father, Father let, the let the vision of church planting, of church planting and soul winning burn, burn in, the in the heart of the church members. The church members. You understand the simple prayer? We are just following Paul, whose vision was to preach the gospel. And he wanted to start a church and be a pioneer. Say, Father, Father let, the let the vision of church planting. planting. Looks like when you go here, your, your voice is down. Oh, is that how you are? <laughs> I really, I really respected you. Is that? You? <laughs> eh? you don't want the church to go far. <laughs> Say, Father. Father. <laughs> <laughs> this is somebody's vision that he wants to preach the gospel at a place Christ is not named. I want to be a founder. I want to be a pioneer. I want to be a church planter. That was somebody's vision. From today, add it to your vision that you want to be a church planter. Say, Father, Father let, the let the vision of church planting, of church planting and soul winning burn in my heart. Burn in my heart. And the hearts of the church members. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Let it burn in your heart. Let the vision of church planting burn in the hearts of the church members. Let the vision of soul winning burn in the hearts of the church members. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let it burn in the heart of our sheep. The vision of church planting, the vision of soul winning, the vision of 500 parcels, 100 parcels in the name of Jesus. Let it burn in the hearts of the people. Makasai. Father, stir them up. Stir them up. Stir them up. Stir them up. In the hearts of the members. In the name of Jesus. Verse 28. This is our last prayer. It says. Therefore. When I have performed this. And have sealed. To them this fruit. I shall go. By way of you. To Spain. So Paul is telling the, the, the Romans that I'm going to Spain. But when I'm returning, I'll pass by. Hallelujah. So he says that when I have performed this and I have sealed to them this fruit, if, I've, if I go and I seal, I get some fruit, some spiritual fruit, and I'm returning, I shall go by way of you to Spain. Next verse 29. I'll pass there before I get to Spain. Okay. But I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. The fullness. <laughs> Do you know the fullness of the, of, of the blessing of the gospel of Christ? Do you know there are people who have experienced the word of God? Like they are full of revelations in the scriptures. In fact, they have listened to some. For instance, let me put it this way. Even me preaching to you and sharing with you the word of God. Okay. I've shared with you the word of God, sir, but you have never gotten any miracle before. It means you have the blessing of the word of God, but you don't have the blessing of the power of God. So it means you don't have the fullness of God's blessing. So when we say you have the fullness of God's blessing, it means you are blessed by God's word and you are also blessed by the power of what? Of God. Hallelujah. You are praying that and you are saying that, Father, make me experience your power. 
I know that most of you have experienced the, the word of God. But it's left with the power of God. Until you experience the power of God, you have not yet experienced the fullness of God's blessing. Hallelujah. You are saying that, Father, make me experience your power in a way I have never experienced in Jesus' name. Do you understand the prayer topic? We are asking for new miracles, not anything that has happened to you before. Like, your meter is not, your prepaid is not reading. It's not going down. Have you seen some before? That's what you are, you are praying for. <laughs> your fuel doesn't go down. You are driving, your fuel doesn't go down. Charlie, many of the things that make sense spiritually doesn't make sense naturally. Many of them. One of them is forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't... Revenge is what makes sense. Naturally. Like if somebody slap you, slap him some. Revenge is what makes sense. Forgiveness doesn't make sense. We are praying. Maybe you have not experienced... Your fuel is not coming down. Some of you, maybe your great... Your, 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 your F has never changed before. <laughs> your grade has never changed before. Some of you too, you have never received miracle money before. Like maybe supernatural deposit of money in your momo, supernatural deposit of money in your bank account. Listen, you are saying, you, you want the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Fullness. Say, Father, Father make, me experience make me experience your power, your power in, a in a way I have never experienced. Have never experienced. In, the in the name of Jesus. Come and lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Shall may you experience the power of God? You have experienced God's word for a very long time. It's now time to experience his power. The Bible says he shall confirm his word with signs and wonders. May you experience it in your life. Yes. Me, I want miracles that I have not seen before. Yes. Yes. Say, I'm the evidence of God's love. I'm the evidence of God's love. Yes. 
this can be our confession for today you are the evidence of the love of god i am the evidence of i'm a i'm a living proof that god is love if we, when we say god is love and you don't understand just look at my life i'm a proof that god is love and now i pray for you that between now and the end of the year god's grace will be multiplied several times in your life God's grace will be multiplied several times in your life. These words and these prayers we have said will produce results in your life. As an individual, in your family, and in everything that concerns you. I declare, let the grace of God upon your life be multiplied in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare the manifestation of his love in your life. And all that concerns you will become evident in the name of Jesus. Everything that you require for the things that God has commanded you to do. For the life that God has called you into. For the things he wants you to fulfill. I ask that the miraculous power of God's spirit will cause it to happen for you in the name of Jesus. You will see more and more results than you ever saw in your life. This coming month. More and more results than you ever saw in your life. In the name of Jesus. What takes people 10 years to achieve? You will see it this new month in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I declare. In this coming month. Precious father. Your children will enjoy health like never before. They will walk in the supernatural like never before. In the name of Jesus, you will become the evidence of God's goodness. You will become the evidence of God's grace. You will become the evidence of God's love. In the name of Jesus, wherever you go, others will take notice of you. Because you are his blessed ones. In the name of Jesus, may his grace overshadow you. May his grace overshadow you. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord answer your thoughts. May the Lord answer your questions on your heart. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord dissolve all your doubt. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Precious Father we love you. I bless your children. With the fullness of the gospel. With your grace. With your love. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. We thank you for your gift tonight. Just a token of your love. We want to see in our lives. A token of your love we want to see in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May your business enter into the next level this month. As today marks the, the last day of the month. May your business enter into the next level. In the, name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May your ministry enter into the next in the level. In the mighty name of Jesus. May your net cut plenty fishes in the ministry. Wherever you shall sit. To call people to preach the gospel to each, that place will be full. In the name of Jesus. Wherever you do your basel meeting will be too small to contain you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.